You're listening to the Creatorpreneur Podcast, episode 25, and today we're talking about how control prevents you from getting everything you want. So, stay tuned. Hello, my name is Rodney Washington, author, artist, and entrepreneur, and I'm passionate about helping creatives just like you do what lights you up and make a comfortable living while doing it. Each week, I'll be sharing timely business growth, marketing, and mindset hacks in interviews with courageous creative entrepreneurs to inspire you to get paid for your creativity. So grab your favorite beverage, sit back, and enjoy today's show. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by my free audio book and PDF, Get Paid for Your Creativity, 57 Ways to Monetize Your Gifts and Create True Security for Yourself. To get your hands on a copy of the free audio book and PDF, go to getpaidforyourcreativity.com forward slash 57 ways gift. I'd like to start this episode of the podcast with a quote. Surrender the need to know before you act. Now, this is one of my favorite quotes because as creatives, I know that we can get caught up in overthinking. At least I know I do. And overthinking, in my opinion, will rob you of living your best life. But what I wanted to examine for a minute is what causes overthinking. And the answer I came to was very simple in one word, control. You might think, as I did, that if you can control whatever happens, including other people and ultimately circumstances, that you will increase the odds that the thing that you're working towards, the thing that you want, will come to pass. But as I thought about this further for myself, and this may be, again, applicable to you, that what I'm really not trying to control other people, what I'm really trying to control is my response to whatever happens. In my experience, I have come to the realization that what people who are addicted to control is really trying to control is not other people, but our own emotions and reactions to people, circumstances, and ultimately outcomes. In other words, what we're really saying to ourselves is, I won't be able to handle this if what I'm working for doesn't happen. Now, maybe that's you. Maybe you can relate to that. So what I've come to the conclusion is if you can control other people, circumstances, and the need to know how things are going to turn out, we absolutely can control our reactions and thusly our emotions. Now, keeping that in mind, I want you I want you to ask yourself, is there anything that you've been holding back doing? For example, perhaps there's a creative project you've been wanting to start, like creating an online course or writing a book or launching your jewelry line, but you hold back for fear you won't be able to handle the result if what you're working toward doesn't turn out as you hoped. Another way to know if you are holding yourself back is if you find yourself procrastinating by, for example, over-researching. I know that's something I can tend to do over-researching, trying to get more information before you take action, or waiting until you get the money, I'm doing air quotes with my fingers, uh, or until you quit your job, or get a new job, or move, or get a divorce, or get married, or wait until your kids are in school, whatever the reason you're giving yourself not to start. And I challenge you to examine the stories and reasons you're telling yourself why you have to wait until perfect circumstances exist. By asking yourself one simple question, is whatever this is I'm telling myself, is it true? Or is it a stalling tactic to keep me safe? Because in every scenario I just mentioned, there are creatives, for an example, writing books that or doing a play or starting a jewelry line business or a cupcake design company or whatever that are still doing whatever that creative pursuit is, even in the midst of anything else going on in their life. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago about writing, I looked up a little bit of information on J.K. Rowling, who's the creator of the wildly successful Harry Potter series. She was a mother with, you know, two young children when she first wrote her book, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, that was published back in 1997. And that book, series of books, as you well know, has gone on to sell hundreds of millions of copies. 
Were circumstances perfect when she decided to write her books? Absolutely not. She was struggling. She was going through a rough time. But she still wrote, even in the midst of taking care of children, taking care of young children, and struggling financially. So this made me think, if you know that the circumstances of life will never be perfect or ideal before you take action, then the the question becomes, why wait? If you can now... I haven't written books myself. I can relate to this. I like what I call taking something that could be considered a big project and chunking it down to something that's micro, something that doesn't feel like I'm sitting down to write a book in one setting because pretty much no one does. But if you can, you can manage manage to write, say a hundred words a day of your new book. And at the end of 30 days, you'll have accumulated 3000 words. And at the end of the year, that's a whopping 36,000 words. And I don't know about you, but that sounds like a book to me. Even if you can only manage to write for 10 minutes here and there, that's still a heck of a lot better than waiting for everything in your life to be perfect before you start. Because trust me, perfect circumstances will never happen. So this brings me to another one of my favorite quotes. Do what you can with what you have right where you are. I watched a video recently on Twitter from photographer and founder of Creative Live and the author of the new book, Creative Calling, Establish a Daily Practice, Infuse Your World with Meaning, and and Succeed in Life and Work by Chase Jarvis. On the video I saw of him on Twitter, he was standing in the magazine section of Barnes Noble in New York. And he was talking about how, when he was first getting his photography career off the ground, how he would scour the magazines at the Barnes & Noble's newsstand for the publications he wanted to shoot for. Now, at that time, when he was first getting started, he didn't even have the money to buy the magazines, which he said in the video was running up to five bucks a, a magazine. He couldn't afford it. But what he did do was he went through the publications that he thought would be appealing to the kind of work he wanted to shoot, And he wrote down the names of photographers whose style captured his eye and who he wanted to emulate. But he would also check out the masthead of the magazine and jot down the editor's and creative director's name, contact info. And then he would reach out to those list of contacts that he collected. Thus, this strategy didn't cost him anything because his time, nothing more, more than his time, because cash was in short supply. And that's how he landed his first photography gigs. In other words, he didn't sit around waiting until he had everything figured out, like he had a pocket full of cash to buy magazines, <laughs> or until his website or portfolio was perfect. He did what he could with what he had, and his efforts paid off. And even if he didn't, even if the things he tried didn't work, I have every confidence he would have tried something else. I don't know if you saw the, the DVD, The Secret, that came out about 13 or so years ago, but I want to wrap this episode of the podcast with this quote featured in the film by Dr. Martin Luther King. Take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. So moving forward, I invite you to replace control and fear with faith, because in truth, that's all we, all any of us have really anyway. So I want to wrap up this episode by giving you a couple of uh, links in the show notes, which you can find at getpayforyourcreativity.com forward slash 025 for episode 25. I'm going to link to Chase Jarvis's new book on Amazon, as I mentioned a moment ago, Creative Calling, Establish a Daily Practice, Infuse Your World with Meaning, and Succeed in Life and Work. I also have a link to his website as well, which you can learn about his whole story and trajectory. So I put a link to that in the show notes as well. Now, something else, another resource I wanted to mention that I didn't talk about in the show, but I think it's really powerful. And I'm going to talk about him more in future episodes coming up. There's a gentleman uh, by the name of Jim Fortin, who I've been really listening to his podcast that he has. And I'm going to put the link to his podcast also in the show notes. He has several episodes on, well, pretty much the whole show is built around mindset and and working with mindset and working with internal issues that we struggle with that prevent us from achieving and going for what we want. As I mentioned in, and I think in the last episode of the podcast, I talked about how strategy 
is only as good or as, as effective as your ability to move your mind away from limitations in order to execute the strategy that you have. So Jim has been really instrumental in helping me to shift my mindset about where I'm taking action or lack of action and moving those blocks away so that I can move forward. And I just listened to this podcast episode, episode number four, called The Biology of Fear. Has a really simple strategy that I'm actually using right now to help shift the way I view things that I quote unquote feel, feel fearful of so that I can move forward. And, and again, I'm going to put the links to that in the show notes, which you can find again at get pay for your creativity dot com forward slash zero two five for episode twenty five. But there's going to be a link in there to that particular podcast episode called the biology of fear. He breaks down what fear actually is and how it originates. It's a part of a part of our brain that actually calls the reptilian part of our brain that actually is the the reactive tool It's the flight or fight or flight reaction reactionary part of our brain that signals to us that we are in danger and it needs to get involved to help get us out of danger. And that's what fear really is rooted in. Uh, Our brain has associated something that could cause us harm. And in the case where there's, you know, really life threatening situations, that part of the brain is useful in that respect. But there's also parts of our brain, that part of our brain can can get activated, let's say, if we uh, want to avoid rejection or we want to avoid being judged, quote unquote. So that part of the brain does not discern between real, like potential you know, body, body, uh, body harm, if you will, to um, what we call, what I would call uh, fear around or hesitancy around doing something that's not going to physically cause you harm, but you might feel emotionally uncomfortable, like standing in front of a group of people and giving a speech or delivering a talk or putting out a a piece of work for fear it's going to get criticized or judged. And so we can stop ourselves from moving forward because that fear is controlling us. So in this particular episode that I'm going to link in the show notes, uh, Jim will uh, has a simple strategy, four part strategy that you can get that will show you how to reframe how you're looking at things that bring up fearful feelings or thoughts, how you can reframe that so that your body, your brain doesn't signal that this is a real danger. Actually, it's just your response to something that feels unfamiliar to you, foreign to you, that feels uncomfortable to you, like being on camera. Like me personally, I'm not a big person about being on video. That's a fear I'm trying to work through. So being on camera or going on stage and speaking from a group of people or again, a creative project. If you're struggling in those ways, this is where this uh, this particular training can really help you to reframe how you're looking at it and how you're examining it so that you can be able to move past it and actually take action on the things that you're learning. So again, I'm going to put all of that inside the show notes, including a link to another episode um, he has on habits that I really like as well. So that's what I have for you this week. I encourage you to listen to this again. And make a list. I'm going to give you a little homework. Make a list of maybe a couple of things that you've been wanting to do creative wise. Uh, It can be one. Let's say you've been wanting to start your jewelry line or you've been thinking about writing a book or you've been thinking about starting, you know, some other type of side business project. And write down a couple of micro actions you can take to get that project off the ground. Maybe it's making a phone call. Maybe it's making samples. Maybe it's, you know, setting up your website. Maybe it's, you know, going to a farmer's market and trying to show your things and trying to sell them. At least begin to find out where you can go. And again, if that fearful feelings come up again, check out that episode, The Biology of Fear by Jim Fortin. Again, the link is in the show notes. Have a listen to that. And see if you can move past that fear. You know, fear is an acronym that some people like to call false evidence that appears real. So ask yourself, is this really something I'm really that's going to cause me harm? Or is it just something that's maybe challenging my self-esteem or challenging my self-worth? And I know that it's not the truth of my being that I can move beyond and move through it so that I can then accomplish what I'm here to accomplish. So again, check out all of that. All of the information is there inside the show notes. Again, for getpayforyourcreativity.com forward slash 025 
for episode 25. And I'll see you on the next episode of the podcast. Take care. We have entered the age of creative self-employment. In the new economy, people are creating true security for themselves. That's why I believe there's never been a better time in history to monetize your gifts. So if you're ready to take control of your financial and creative future, I have something for you. It's my free audio and PDF program, 57 Ways to Monetize Your Gifts and Create True Security for Yourself. And you can get that at my website, getpayforyourcreativity.com forward slash 57 ways gift.